happens with the council, and then let's see what happens with the emergency manager. I'd like to move for a special council meeting next Monday at 5.30, and that the agenda would be general city business as it relates to business that need to be taken care of. If they want to add something on the agenda, that's fine. Now, in discussion, if you believe that's not right, if it may get a second, but I'm going to aggressively try to do my job, and I can't do it without council meetings. You got to have a quorum. That's the way we operate. So I so move that we have a special meeting next Monday at 5.30. Mr. President, Mr. Neely? If I'd be, so, be so kind to offer this as a recommendation or, and or a suggestion, um, let's let the new council members uh, that's not as seasoned as yourself to get a time to be acclimated and to move forward with the training process so they can meet department heads and get a feel for uh, the scope of, a, of the full responsibilities of council people before we engage in those meetings so they'll know their role and responsibility a little more. So I think now if we schedule a meeting next week, it'll be a little premature. Uh, let's be fair to our colleagues, and I would just make that as a recommendation uh, going forward so, we, so they can get acclimated to the process prior to just having a barrage of meetings. If I could be so kind to make that uh, as a recommendation to you. Either a motion going to pass or die for a lack of second, but I'm on record, and I think that we got to do our job and meet. I'm not offended, but I'm going to still be a man of action rather than talk. Mr. President, if I could, I'd like to make a comment uh, to go along with Mr. Neely. Is I believe for us to be effective, we have to know what the rules are here, the protocol that exists. Because I don't want to, since being new to the group, walk in and then mess things up. I want to know how I can be good at what I'm doing. I want to be effective. And I want to work with what exists and be a part of a partnership that we need to be successful here. So I don't want to disrupt what's already here. I want to be strong. And I want us to be strong together. So. You know, I'm looking forward to the orientation that I heard uh, Inez mention. I'm looking forward to what the emergency manager mentioned earlier about meeting with us. And, you know, please give us some information so we can be strong and in good and be the best that we can in our jobs. I miss Van Buren, Mr. Chairman, if I may. To Mrs. Van Buren, my intent is to help make us stronger. See, we can get information from the emergency manager. We can get information from individuals individually, because that's what y'all have been doing. Five people at least, because I wasn't included in it. So what I'm getting at is this. I got the same intent you got. But I think the only way we can talk as a group it's when we meet. That's what the law say. So regardless of what anybody else got set up for us, it's incumbent upon me, and I don't mind if it die for a lack of a second, but guess what? I know that if they say he's open to us meeting, then it's on us. If he's open to it, he shouldn't be offended. It don't disrupt nothing if we try or attempt to call a meeting. And so, therefore, I make the motion, if that information about open is true, we ain't pissing nobody off. If people want to wait and um, not talk as a group and do it like y'all have been doing it, we'll figure it out. But my motion stands. I'm ready to go to work. If it dies for a lack of a second, I'm not offended. It's just that I'm going to do everything I can to get us meeting, because the more we meet, the sooner we can get the work done, the sooner we get the work done, the sooner we restore democracy, in my opinion. Thank you. There's a motion that's been moved. Is there support? Mr. Mays, your motion dies for lack of support. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Jackie, do you have anything? Um, Thank you. Councilman um, Melvin. Just, just real things that I wanted to um, just say. Um, one, there's going to be a major announcement um, this Wednesday related to the um, Buick City site um, coming from the Racer Trust Group. Um, I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm not really at liberty to really go into it, but the journal actually um, somebody leaked information to them. So they, they've got an article in the paper that you can actually look at today. But it's something that um, has been in the works for some time and is related to the, um, the pipeline. It's related to um, the pipeline that's coming. And it's a major corporation that's going to have a significant investment, going to build a manufacturing plant at the Buick City site. So this is going to be coming on Wednesday. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to say, um, um, this Friday, Friday night from 7 to 10 p.m. at um, Omen Temple on um, North Saginaw on Gillespie, um, myself and Juantez is going to have just a short um, victory celebration. We have food and um, fun for folks if you want to stop by just to congratulate us. It'll be from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Omen Temple right on the corner of um, it's on the north side, for some of y'all that's scared of the north side. But it's going to be around the corner of Gillespie and North Saginaw. Um, I had asked my colleague also, uh, Mr. Mays, but he, um, he said he didn't know if he was going to be able to, to make it or not. But um, he's welcome to come as well. Um, it's free, open to the public, and we hope you'll come down and just, uh, you know, um, talk with us, congratulate us, or whatever you might want to do. Thank you. Mr. President, could I ask you a question real quick, Councilor, you to Councilman Nolan? You stated that that announcement would be made. I know what it is, and maybe I leaked it because I didn't know I was to be quiet, but or maybe I didn't. But my question relevant to that, do we have representatives that's already scheduled to be at that announcement? And I know you are vice president and Mr. Yes. Kincaid is the president, but I know Mr. Neely sits on that Karagandi board. And I'm very curious to see if these jobs and things are announced, if this is true, whatever it is, he say we can read about it. I know what it is, but I wanna know that we're gonna be represented at that announcement? I would definitely be there. I've, I've had my invitation for about two weeks. Okay. I have not received any communications uh, as it relates to any particular announcement or date as of yet. Mr. President, under, in light of that, could I make a referral to Jeff Wright that he contact Mr. Neely in the next 24 hours relevant to that? I think, Mr. Mays, that the invitation come from the Genesee Regional Chamber, Chamber not from uh, Jeff Wright's office. Well, then I could amend that and, and hope can, that this body. What I know of the details of the of the announcement is when, this Wednesday at two o'clock. Yeah, but I want this man and others and you and have you got a formal an invitation that could you've I, had for could, two weeks, Mr. Could I, President? Could I? Could I? Could can I, Mr. Nolan help? Yeah, what um, I'm trying to actually, get to. actually, it came to each one of us in our council email. If you looked at your council email about two weeks ago, every council member was invited so to with, come to it. Would the new council people then be invited? I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure. Can we clear me. that up? If Mr. President, if you can handle that, or council Mr. Council Nolan council can council handle council it council informally. Council. All council members will be welcome to the announcement. Okay, thank you. Mr. Davis, Councilman Davis, Councilman Neely. Yes, just a quick quick announcement. Uh, just to clear up some misinformation as it relates to uh, uh, current legislation that I was preparing about uh, dogs in our community. Uh, the ordinance is pretty much what I'm working on is geared toward poor dog owners. Uh, of a vicious breed dog, and we talked about the pit bull breed dog in this piece of legislation. I know Council President Kincaid has also spoke to uh, legal as, uh, as it relates to getting me some support and some help on that. And also, I want to send a referral to legal and Peter. Is, is Peter still over there? I can't see him. Oh, yeah, Peter, if, uh, as much in the past, I know your office is really busy with all the other things, but 
uh, we need to move forward, and I need some help from your department as we move forward with some maybe uh, legislation to help enforce uh, dog owner, owners inside the city of Flint uh, that owns these vicious breed dogs uh, to comply with the rules and regulations. If I can get uh, just some support you know, from your office, uh, that's going to be required. I know Scott has talked to you about it in the past, mm -hmm. if we can get that done, because this is a, a photo of a 12-year-old girl that was attacked here in the city of Flint. They had to undergo... Uh, some significant um, undergo stitches and different things of that nature. Uh, dog animal control is currently run by the county. Animal control was notified of the situation. They went to the site. They quarantined that dog right where the dog resides for 10 days. After the 10-day period elapsed, the dog still resides uh, two doors away from where this young girl was attacked in the public right away. She was playing outside. The dog came out attacked her. The owner had to come out and pry the dog away from her. Um, the family had to forego uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of regular everyday expenses because they had to pay for the stitches and probably some um, consultation or some, some counseling for this young girl. Uh, they, they could not go after the owner civilly because the owner was a renter and they did not have renter's insurance. And so with that, you know, currently the county operates uh, our animal control in, in the side of the city of Flint. But I think we need to beef this up because some of these dogs, and we've all seen them, uh, not, the, not the majority, but most, some of these dogs are vicious breed dogs and they can inflict great bodily harm upon the public if they're not controlled by their owners. So what I'm proposing is put, the, put a piece of legislation together to make dog owners accountable for their animals. And if their animals attack people, to inflict harm, I would like to go after them criminally. And so with that, I would like to send a referral to legal and, and uh, as soon as we can, we start working on drafts of this and I'm working with a lot of people and uh, just, working on that. Just, yes. I recognize that. Just, on just one, one, one question through you, um, Mr. President, to um, Neely, Councilman Neely. Are you, are you just singling out pit bulls? No, I, what I was saying, uh, Councilman Nolan, I said dog owners. Dog okay, owners. because because, you know, that, that, that has been the, um, I guess, the, the general perception that a lot of people in the community have, that you're singling out pit bulls. And, you know, with me being a 35-year-plus owner of pit bulls that have grown up in my house, in the neighborhood or whatever, I, just, I was just hoping that we weren't just singling out one particular breed because, you know, any dog can be vicious if you, uh, if you don't have the proper training. So, you know, that's, that was just my concern. Uh, but, okay, thank you. Right, but just I'm going to respond to that because that, that is some of the, the miscommunications. And, and, um, thank you. Some of these dog owners that own pit, breed, uh, pit bull dogs, and it, it will be somewhat uh, breed specific. I'm not really worried about a chihuahua or a schnauzer killing me. They don't have the propensity nor the capability to do so. But I am afraid of a pit bull dog. But I'm going after the, the owners and irresponsible owners of these dogs and there are 17 other local units of government inside of the state of Michigan that also have breed-specific legislation against pit bull animals. Some communities ban them all together. You cannot own them. Other communities have, uh, uh, designate them as dangerous and vicious animals. So this is not anything groundbreaking as it relates to talking about pit bulls, but it is groundbreaking as we talk about ownership of these animals. Most people that engage in nefarious activity, dog fighting, uh, illegal activity to use these dogs to protect the, their, their product or whatever, uh, we're trying to make sure this community is safe. This young girl is so traumatized.